In this video from Skahoy Innovation Lab, we'll be looking at the Stream Deck Plus and how that interfaces with Reactor. And you may wonder, what is it with Stream Decks and Skahoy? Because if you have followed us, you know that we make broadcast panels. These kind of professional panels in rack sizes, in tabletop units, specifically tailored for AV and broadcast use. But we are also starting to see what Reactor can do. It can bring all kinds of wonderful panels from the world around us together, including Stream Deck panels like these, including legacy Skahoy panels like this Rack Fusion Live, which is actually the Uniskits version of this one that has blue pill inside. And here is one favorite from the past. The C31, one of the first controllers that we ever made and which I really have some sort of special love for. So all these can be brought together inside of Reactor, which is this application that currently runs the Stream Deck. And I'll start this video by showing you what I've just done. So we basically go through the result of this series of videos about how to configure the Stream Deck Plus. I gotta admit a few things as well. This is gonna be a really, you know, it's, it's gonna be a hardcore session of videos. I have not enough chilies on my videos to really rate this, so I'm gonna give it a four. But uh, hopefully you will find it inspiring or entertaining, or even you might learn something. Because we can do so many crazy things with Reactor and you'll it will really blow your mind, but it will also be pretty close to coding much of it. But this is what I'm passionate for, and let's look at the end result. So what is it I've done? I've taken this Stream Deck Plus and connected it to an ATEM switcher and also a PDC camera, a Panasonic PDC camera, this guy. Okay, so this one is actually located across town at the offices uh, of Skahoy, the headquarters. You see, it's pretty much empty, and I'm afraid this is absolutely correct because um, we just moved all our gear to Barcelona for the ISE 2023 show. So this is why it's so empty uh, in the show room. Anyway, we have this camera with us and we'll record presets on it on the Stream Deck Plus. And we'll also work with the Atom switcher, which is right here. We have the Atom software control here. Now, if I operate the Atom switcher, you can see something is already happening over here on the Stream Deck Plus. So um, what happens on this one is that we can, uh, I have set it up so that we have four keys that will select our preview. We have a cut button here so that we can execute cut. We have an auto button that will make a transition over a second. We have a fade to black button right here. When it is faded to black, we'll see that it's blinking, just like the ATEM switcher itself does. And then we see that we have a little key icon here, which is enabling and disabling uh, key as the next transition that you find in the ATEM software control right here and uh, we can disable it once again. Now, some of the really cool things, apart from these buttons working, uh, and also having a concept that mixes the graphics that comes out of Reactor with a little uh, LED bar or a bar on top that indicates the color of the button to sort of mimic the LED color that you would normally find on a professional panel like the Skahoy series here. Then we also have the encoders. That is the new thing on the Stream Deck Plus. And with the encoders, I have made some really crazy graphics completely automatically generated inside of Reactor, except the background, of course. But I have, um, they, they, are, they are compositions of a background image with an overlaid rectangle with rounded corners. And on top of that, we have a true type font being rendered in white or whatever. We have some widgets. We have some image sources coming in from our device core connections. For instance, that little picture there is from the PDC camera when we store a preset. So let's just quickly look at, at how this works. We have the, um, the transition selection here. So if I'm turning the encoder, you see that transition transitions are changing on the ATEM switcher. If I press any of these, like if I take the dip and I press the encoder just once, then I get to changing the frame rate of the transition in uh, in the dip transition in this case. So I can change that to 33. If I go to the wipe transition, then I have a different selection for the wipe. We can pull that down to 26. If we go back here to, um, to dip, we can see that it's still at 33, so that was a coincidence. The master volume can be changed on this knob here. And if I press it, then I have a little course icon indicating that now my, my turning the knob will result in much bigger steps uh, in adjusting the volume. Now, let's just quickly check this in the audio control section of the ATEM switch. You can see that I'm actually adjusting the master volume on the encoder here. 
and it is reflected. What is the DB read back from the atom switcher? And there's even a little widget in the bottom that indicates like strength for fun and swag. And then finally, we have the preset recall on the Panasonic camera. Now, this is really cool. Look at the Panasonic camera right here. Let me just go into some position. So what you see there is a thumbnail that was saved the moment we stored the preset. What happens if I press the button is that it goes to that cropping of the Pantel Zoom camera. Isn't that wonderful? Now, let's say that we go to preset two. So I select the preset by turning the knob. Then uh, let's just find a different position here. So we'll just zoom in on something. Oh, I really love that end graphic we have in the other part of the room. So let's just capture the eyes of this gypsy girl. And yeah, all right, let's press and hold. And as we do, notice that we save the preset and we capture the thumbnail of the camera. Now, if I go back to the first one, this thumbnail and I press, it's going to recall that preset on the camera. So this is what we call visual presets. And obviously, a Stream Deck is amazing for that, including Skyhoy panels, because we have color displays in some of our panels like the Frameshot series. So look out for that one and see how wonderful the Frameshot series fit with our PDC controllers. And then finally, we have a little menu. It's uh, currently I have two options in it and we have um, audio, input audio, and I also have DVE position here. I can choose between these two. Once again, this is dynamically generated. These titles are absolutely flexible inside of Reactor. So let's just go to input audio, for instance. And now I want to go and check out the ATEM software control here because you can see that we have um, the ability again to adjust the volume. Now, in this case, I did not apply fancy graphics. So I just have like standard encoder action with a little uh, fine course mode, which is this little icon. So I can just toggle that on and off. And that determines what is the resolution of my changes. So I can do that for all channels here and uh, turn it on and off with a fine course mode. But I also did something else, which is really cool. I added presets on the top. So during this series, I'll show you how we can capture select parameters from the ATEM switcher in a preset that we can store and recall on Re Reactor, the uh, panel management software that is running the Stream Deck right now. So let's just try to recall presets. As I press that button, you see that all the faders and also the on and off and what is that called? Um, it's, it's on, off, it's audio follow video, it has a name mixer option or something like that. Yeah, these settings are stored and recalled as I'm pressing these buttons on the controller. Okay, now let's say that I wanted these settings to be stored specifically. Okay, so just remember the pattern you're seeing right now. Everything is is on and we have this kind of little uh, arrangement of the faders. If I'm pressing and holding on number four, it turns, I think it turned green quickly on top here. So that means I just saved it. If I recall over here, you see everything moves in different position. And now I recall what we just had by pressing button number four. So that's what you get with presets inside of Reactor. Unfortunately, it's a feature that doesn't even have a UI yet. So I am bringing you into the coding of Reactor. And I'm sorry, but who better than me to, to, uh, to present that to you guys? Um, we will have a lot of the features in Reactor, which is sort of hidden underneath. And that is going to be a big theme in what we are doing right now, because all this dynamic graphics generation doesn't have UIs either. So you will have to work with the JSON editor. And this is why we give it four chilies uh, for the for the um, uh, difficulty of this training series. Anyway, I have a little exit button up here and that would allow me to go to the DV position. And if I go into that one, we find exactly the same. So if we go back to the switcher section, you can see DVE parameters is over here. Totally. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah, perfectly reflected. Actually, I have like, um, I have a little bit of a swipe here. Yeah, you see the swipe is working. So I can go between audio and also the DVE. But sometimes it's not this the swipe is tricky to me. Now, actually, that that swipe, it's not really reactor that does it. It's I, I don't know what it is. I need to check that out. But for this video, there's going to be a few bugs and weird things and so on. And uh, one of them seems to be my screen right now. <laughs> OK, let me just reload that. OK, so this is this is reactor, the configuration tab. We're going to spend a lot of time in here. And what I really wanted to do right now for me, yes, 
thank you, <laughs> is to just uh, capture that. I usually do that by pressing the name of the panel on the very top. Then it's going to um, like fit the panel into the view. Now, I can manipulate it. But if I go into simulation mode, if I press here, you can see that I'm basically going forth and back by just simulating the swipes. However, it doesn't pick it up correctly. So I, I probably have a bug in the driver for the Stream Deck at the moment. But that might be fixed the moment you are sitting with this yourself. Now, let's just go over to the DVE settings right here. And in these settings, you should see a perfect reflection of the settings of the DVE. Once again, I recorded presets up here with exactly those four settings. So we'll be able to see how we can record those and store them. So, but I can obviously uh, change this. I also have like a fine course mode, but in this case, I made a little uh, special thing, which means that fine course is enabled for all four of them and disabled at the same time, not individually, but for all of them. And that's uh, something you can choose to do in your configuration. Just goes to show how flexible Reactor Rail is. But as you can see, I'm changing these parameters over here by turning the knobs of the uh, Stream Deck Plus here. And if I press and hold, let's say I want to store preset right there, we can now see that it is a lighter blue. And now notice the parameters. Are you ready? Recall, recall, and I just recalled the settings that I had from the adjustments I just did. So this is the demonstration of the end goal of this session, what will reach through the sessions. And uh, to do all this, I have prepared a few graphic files. So I just quickly want to introduce you to that. So these are basically uh, PNG files. I think they are 150 by 150 pixels. And I made them in Photoshop and they are ready now to be used here. I also have this wavy background logo and uh, the, um, the complete dimensions of the screen behind the four encoders on the Stream Deck Plus is 800 pixels by 100 pixels. So that's what this one is prepared to do. So I'm actually taking this graphic, importing it into Reactor, and then I'm using it as a background for all the overlays that I'm putting on it. Then I also want to show you just quickly the resulting configuration, which is um, pretty nasty in many ways. <laughs> it doesn't look like that, but this is actually 1.6 uh, megabyte of JSON code. The megabyte dimension comes into play because we are putting a lot of graphics in and they are base64 encoded in line in the config. That's how we need to do it right now. But it's actually working pretty fine. It's just a lot of data. But anyway, this configuration is what is really driving the, um, just, just hang on here. This is a layer, it's called plus, and then it has a lot of stuff on it. And we are gonna go through that during this video. So that's everything you see right here in the left side of the configuration tab. You, you see the, um, this layer called plus is actually that. And if you wanna edit that code inside, in the context of Reactor, you just click that edit raw, and you see exactly this configuration here. And uh, I think now you can appreciate what I just said, that it is a pretty nasty one. Um, big load of JSON. And somehow it, it's, yeah, okay, it's here. Uh, yeah, there you have all the graphics. They're just a single line, but that line is pretty, pretty, pretty long. All right, so I think we are more or less ready. We have uh, kind of set up the parameters for this whole thing, and you have seen a demonstration of it. And now we want, to kind of replicate this from uh, ground up. So you probably wonder, so how, how are we doing all this? First of all, when you wanna work with the Stream Deck Plus and Skahoy, you need a blue pill or one of the XC controllers. That is, um, XC is a reference to a certain size of controllers from Skahoy that has a USB-A plug in the backside, and that's what you need. So the blue pill has it here. It has a USB-A, and that goes straight into the Stream Deck. It's actually powering the unit, and you can do that with a Stream Deck Plus at least, although I think the Stream Deck XL is just a little bit too power hungry to be powered by the blue pill, so you can't. Notice that it's a single cable solution, so it has POE, power over Ethernet, and we love that for all our units. These units from Skahoy, they are power over Ethernet, single cable solution, signal, and power on a single wire, perfect. And the blue pill, that is the brain. That is where this software is running. On the blue pill, you see, you find this web interface. So this is the IP address of the blue pill, okay? Now, <clears throat> how's that all connected? Well, if you go into packages, what you need to get, back at packages is like our application overview. This is everything that is currently installed on my blue pill. Most of these are device calls, talking to devices, uh, broadcast devices like Panasonic, PDC, Serial, we have Artnet, HTTP, MIDI, NDI, TCP, UDP, Visca, all kinds of things. Today, we're just working with a Panasonic PDC device call, and we are also using the XPanel Stream Deck. 
application right here. If I click in on this one, you can see um, a few things that we have been setting up for the Stream Deck. So you need this application. And um, I just want to go out here in the home screen, which is where you mostly start your projects. And on the home screen, you see we have the blue pill. And then we have added the Stream Deck Plus panel, which is facilitated by that application I just showed you. And then we have added a few devices over here. So let's get started and do this our own. So I'll just manage projects and let me see. The project we currently have is called Plus Two. So just so we know, we can get back to Plus Two, um, our little project here, if we want to. But for this, um, I'll just call it Plus Video and add this project. So what happens as I just press save basically, and yes, I want to activate it, is that now a new project is being set up for me and um, we are soon ready to go. Okay, so this is a new project. Now, look what happens over here. The Stream Deck itself says, waiting for Blue Pill. It means that nothing is connected to it. It's just waiting for you to do something useful. And in a different video, I showed you how the Stream Deck is in, essentially enabled as a raw panel device. Raw panel is our protocol for panels to talk together. That is the secret why this old C31, the uh, Rack Fusion Live I just had, and the Stream Deck, all fit into Reactor because they are following the raw panel protocol that makes panels self-describing. They are explaining to Reactor what features they have and how they look, and therefore Reactor can just take any raw panel in and configure the features of the panel, like buttons, knobs, displays, faders, and so on. And that's the backbone of everything we do. So we are just having a blank configuration here, and the first thing I want to do basically would be to say, hey, let's add a panel. Discovery of panels is a pretty cool feature because that will scan your network and see what it can find. There are already some panels on the network. I have no clue where they are in the world, but they look like somebody. Some of my development team is probably simulating this somewhere. And then I have, uh, let me see, the Stream Deck Plus, which is coming from my IP address. No, 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 it's coming from the blue pill. You see it is on 11.5, which is ourselves. So we'll just select this one and notice what happens over here on the uh, Stream Deck Plus, it is uh, blanking out. And that means that we are connected. We can test that connection by clicking here and it lights up the buttons. So as I said, there's this LED bar on top and that indicates that that is like our uh, translation of a button color. The button color will appear as that bar having a certain color. So we'll just disable this again. And um, so I can now select a new configuration, which is one thing that I want to do. And uh, if we should go by the same naming as before, we'll just call this plus for video. Okay, so we can at least see these two uh, being separate. Then let's add some devices. Again, we can discover devices, which is again, pretty cool. So um, let me see, I think this ATA Mini here is, yes, okay, ha. This is by the way, funny. This ATA Mini is probably in LA at this moment. So uh, that's an interesting thing, um, but, yeah, what do you do? Internet. Awesome. Uh, let me find another device, which is not discoverable, which is a Panasonic um, UE70 camera. That is the one that we have up on this IP address. So let's just take this IP address so that we get this into our config here and put in this. Ooh, watch out. Watch out. We don't want HTTP. Just that. And it should connect. Awesome. Okay, so I have now two devices. They're both device ID number one, which can be important in this case, but it usually starts numbering from that point. And we have the Stream Deck connected here. So that's the basic configuration for our project. Let's go to the configuration tab. And now let's get started on applying some functionality. Um, first of all, just ignore this layer. This layer is basically making sure that the blue pill is showing something useful. And what do I mean by that? Hey, the blue pill is a part of our configuration today. Now, this little guy here, it has a little bit of a display and the way we put display stuff into it is by letting it be a panel. So a blue pill is essentially a panel without any buttons. It just has a display and it also has like a tally LED on the backside. And we can simply code that just or um, configure that with Reactor just like if it was a Stream Deck in this case or a Skyway panel or whatever. This is our Stream Deck Plus. Let's just um, get those program preview buttons up and running. So I just want to drag across these with my shift key held down. I just held shift down, 
dragged across those and now we need to check because it says that it's going to create some behaviors on the root layer. I don't want that. I want them to be on the plus for video layer, which is where our configuration starts. And by the way, also how we can export it later on. So the configuration JSON that I started introducing is in fact everything in this layer and then the sub layers of that one. So we can separate it out into multiple files and that makes it easy to share and drop configurations in as like full configurations or snippets of things and hand code them if you want and so on. There's a lot of things you can do in this way. Very open system we're looking at. Now, uh, I still have these selected so I can right click, create behavior. I have this layer selected. I'll just uh, select create and immediately you also see on the stream deck that it drags to this. So that's pretty neat. But there's one thing that you need to understand and that is the different size you see here is different on the panel on the real stream deck because um, I have enabled something for the stream deck panel inside of here, which is like doubling the text size of the displays. So if I go into uh, this one stream deck, then I have this large text thing enabled. And that is the reason why you see it this way. Uh, we can also disable the LED bar. So you see there's this gray LED bar on top of them. Let me just press save and restart here. So if I do that, we'll see just a restart of the Stream Deck. Um, this, the uh, X panel Stream Deck is like the driver that converts the Stream Deck into a raw panel. So what you see right now is that the LED bar disappeared and also the text is significantly smaller. So that it actually, let's go back and check in configuration. It matches really well um, how it is shown in here. Right here, okay. So we got that in place. Now, um, let's go back because I like to sort of conclude or uh, perform this demo with the configuration, at least with the LED bar. I find that very useful. And uh, so let's, we're just setting it back to what we came from right there. Okay, so it's just rebooting. Uh, what does that mean? It probably means out here we'll see it just unconnected for, for a short moment. It says unconnected, but now as it is ready, soon. Yep, there you saw it connected. Perfect. We can go into configuration and then we'll see once again these things are lined up to match. Let's go into one of these and then we'll select the parameter from the ATEM switcher. And uh, that would be preview. Let's just search preview. And then under the headline cross point, we have preview input video source. Perfect. And then on ATEM switches, we need the uh, 1ME as a parameter to that one. It's just thinking for a short while. And then hopefully something happens over here. It selected something called preview select. I, um, uh, I generally, I, I like to use the, the set value as a, um, um, the, the behavior, the, the master behavior of this one. We'll just add match value, select input number one. And now actually it looks like it would work in this way. Now, if we just drag across and we use the batch editor, then we can quickly by selecting these, we can replicate these things down and then match value and plus one to that one. So this was a quick way to take four buttons and just make them the same, basically. I am, uh, yeah, the way, the reason why it says input number one is simply because we put in the label here and if the label exists, it's going to be used. Um, so just check this and like that. All right. So we have it now. Let's just check with the ATEM software control if this actually works. And it seems that it does. One of the things we're used to when we're dealing with video switches is to see green and red being used for preview and program. On a vMix system, which could also be the target for what we're doing, then it would be called uh, active source, which is like program, the live source. And then we have preview, which is I use pretty much everywhere, I would say. Now, um, I want to therefore change some of these things. I also want to make sure that the label we see is coming out of the ASIM switcher. So I'm interested in trying to modify this a little bit. And after having done so, I want to create a master behavior that can be shared with the others. So basically, if you look at this, we're already using a master behavior called set value. And we're just changing match value, the constant match value. Don't care about the name. It's just which value are we setting okay, on the parameter that we have chosen. And the parameter is this one up here. Now, I want to make that into a master behavior. But let's just start by um, basically modifying it a little bit because um, one of the first things that I want to do is to see if we can find a di different, uh, let me see, title. We'll just hard code this to, uh, to video in, uh, input. Maybe, what does it say right now? It says video source, I think maybe. 
Uh, video input would be nice. So do we see that? Uh, let me see. Actually, we don't. Oh, okay. I chose the wrong thing. Now it's the title up here. So let's just check this one video input. Now you'll notice another thing. It will be helpful for us to focus on the um, on the uh, simulated environment here. So instead of looking at the stream deck all the time, we can look right in here because it's going to be the same. And that's very useful. So now we can see, okay, video input is on top. Perfect. Now let's just um, see for the um, for this state down here where it says basically if this is selected, I will just select. Okay, if it is selected, then it should highlight. And I want it to highlight it in green. So I'll just choose green here. Now I'm actually not seeing it simulated right now. I need to press this one because this one I can actually click around and you'll see that in the simulated environment here, I see a reflection also on the ATEM switch as I'm doing this. Or if I click this one, you can see that it changed to camera number two. If I click this one again, it's back at one and so on. So we can operate everything from in here, which is super useful. So let's just disable that for a moment. And then we will um, we will work on getting that information into this one. So <clears throat> if we click on this little X, we see that the what goes into the display is actually like a mix of um, this dynamic value and potentially something else that we place around it. But I now want to go to the ATEM Mini and I think input short name is the parameter that we can choose. So let's just say I want to have the actual name from the ATEM switcher from input number one. So I just put this in and almost, almost, it was almost there. Why not fully? That is an interesting question. Um, let me just see. Why does it say none? I don't know why that label modifier is down here, but that is in fact the problem. So I'll just remove that like this, submit. Yes, there we get it. Cam1 is actually the name being used from the ASIM software right here. We could change it if we thought that it should be something else. Then Cam1 could be, let's just inverse it. Then it would say this one. So Cam1 coming out of the ASIM switcher. Wonderful. Perfect. All right. So what else do I want to do? I want to um, actually modify something. Notice this little one is a reference to the uh, device ID of the ASIM switcher up here. And oftentimes you'll find that we're using a variable inside the system to do that. And we'll also have to do that a little later in this video because um, that um, some of the things that we'll take from the system will have a the variable called device index being used um, in the behaviors that is pre-coded for us. And to the extent that we want to use that, then uh, we could benefit from putting that in. But the most important thing is this little value, because actually we want to take that from up here. And uh, now I have two options. I can either hard code this and I could type in behavior colon const colon match value. And that is what a programmer like me would do who knows reactor. So actually what happens right now is that it's taking this uh, nothing happened over here because that value is one. That is one. But as we are now moving this over to the to the other buttons, then it will take values two, three and so forth. So that is very useful. Now, the other thing that we want to do is to add an additional conditional feedback so that we have it lighting up in red, taking precedence when it is on program. And we'll do that by reading out red tally from the switcher. So we'll just create a new and we can either give it an index of our own or we can choose one uh, like just add at the end and then it's going to take index 20. And these indexes, um, the reason why it's important that you kind of understand the indexes is because if you have a master behavior and you want to override that index, then you'll use the index number to override it with other settings further up in the structure. And that is because we have the, all this inheritance going on in Reactor, which is super useful and a way for us to have really tidy configuration. So you can do something extremely beautiful inside of Reactor. But it can also be like, whew, okay, how did I inherit all these things? So it, you know, it can also get pretty confusing um, if, if you overuse it, maybe. Anyway, let's just move on here and say, I want to have a red color in case uh, something specific. So if I edit this raw, then if I type in the condition true, then you'll see that um, immediately this should actually be red. Let's just check. Yes, it is because I just set the condition to be true. But that's not what we want. We want to have, um, let me see, we want to make sure that 
the program no, the, the, the tally okay let's just search tally here what do we have tallies by source tally flags i'm sorry about that name but it sort of um is what eight and guys called it anyway so um i just want to make sure that yes if the input and this should actually be our the the behavior that i use so this is why i'll choose behavior value and now we are banging our head into some sort of ui bug which is that at this point it should offer me to choose const and then the constant match value but it doesn't uh, but what we can do is this one. So the other one we'll just fix in a moment, but we'll choose program. So it's a program tally, not the preview tally, but the program tally that we want to use. All right. And that has to match true. Yes, it basically has to match true. So that's a literal value. We'll just type in true. And if that is true, then it is going to be read. That is fine. So equal to is equal to. All right. So now we have this condition, but let's just edit it by hand because right now it's not going to light up true or anything. And that is because for strange reasons, I couldn't do this, but we just had this running match value. So now we inserted that one. You can actually put curly braces around it, which is sort of, uh, sometimes it's necessary, but most of the times if you use constants, it's not. So let's just select done. Now let's go to the ATEM software control and see what happens if we actually, uh, we can do a cut. Can we not? Uh, yep, okay, let's ooh, cut. Yeah, you see, however, mm, I noticed one thing. It is actually not highlighted. I want it to be, like highlighted red and that's the intensity so we'll just change the intensity to on and now it's highlighted red perfect we can uh, we cannot cut ourselves yet because we have not created it but now you see that i have the tally on the button working i have the label coming in it's all related to these things and i want to create a master behavior for this one so basically what you do is you go to the layer plus video then you go down here you find mm, let me see master behaviors which is ooh, oh all the way down in the button we can copy from button number five so I would do that. We'll call this select input. Oops. Like that. Great. Thank you. And uh, we now have this master behavior created here. So basically, we just made a copy of everything into this one. There is um, now we don't. Yeah, basically, everything is in this master behavior and the match value constant is going to drive it all the way through. So in fact, what we can do right now is to select all of these and I'm holding down option key on my keyboard, selecting these four behaviors, I can now clear their contents like this. And then I think over here, I can click this guy and I can say now for these, it's kind of weird. I just cleared the contents of these and then it shows something else. Okay, let's just, um, just take one of these. I'll just select them once again. Maybe it was confused for a short while. Okay, now that looks better. So I just reselected them. And let's search for select, 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 select input. That is our master behavior right there. Copy, copy, copy. And then parameter, no need for the parameter. Then select input, one, plus, plus, plus. I wish I could remove this window right now. We don't see anything on the control. So I'll just press done. And there you go. Unfortunately, <laughs> everything is the same color. And it is also so on the stream deck. Why is this? Now, um, maybe somehow I know it is supposed to pick it up from here. The ah, there's a constant called input. Why is that? Oh, oh, let's go over here. Match value. That looks true. That looks correctly. Why is that? OK, I got to check the JSON out. What is the JSON looking for this one? For whatever reason, there is a constant called input. I think it's. It would have been inherited from somewhere, but I want to get rid of this guy. So um, I don't need that one. Save. Ah, now I know. OK, so it was the input constant that I set from the ah. OK, now it really makes sense. OK, let's just select this again. So just select them all. Go in here. Now watch out. It was not select input I should have set. We should basically not have touched that. And then instead, we should use match value. Match value is 1 plus 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 four and there we go all right so now it is in place we have done what we should and um this input thing should sort of have been gone but it is still in there and it is going to trigger us for as long as this one is here so i'll just remove that now we are definitely in the four chili territory are we not 
Okay, so <laughs> it's still so wonderful that we can do this. I mean, just sneak in and out of the UI, and anytime we need a little bit extra help, we can just go into the JSON editor and fix our mess. So that's really awesome. Let's check it. All right, we see that I we, we select a preview here on the, yeah, you don't follow that too much because we should probably just use the simulated environment here. You see that I'm able to uh, select a preview. And uh, if I make a cut, we should be able to, yeah, see these things change around. We have all the labels coming in correctly. Wonderful. 